All right, now, at this point, you have a choice. You have a choice, okay? Um, this is a bit gross, the numbers are a bit gross, but the maths is fine, okay? What I can do is, let's just do this for the sake of argument. If I had this as an equation, not as an inequality, if I had this, for a brief moment, try to ignore, see through, see past the disgustingness of the numbers, how would you rewrite that equation in order to solve for n? Take log of each side, log 10. Okay, now, that's interesting. That is not the main way I would have gone to it first. I will show that method in a minute. But I'm actually just going to say, like, look, this is an exponential. Like, 2 to the 5 equals 32 is an exponential. So I would write that as 5 equals log 2, 32. Do you agree with that? Oh, okay. Like, that's just... That's just a straight definition of what a log is, okay? So therefore here, I could write that as log, now what's the base? One. Yeah, the, you always do the base first, because the base here will be the base of the log. So it's 1.005, and then I have this awkward looking fraction up here, okay? So, right, yes? 1039, not 1039. Oh yeah, you're quite right. There, there, okay. Now that's one thing I could do. However, where's the sign going to go? Yes, I do not have an equation. I've got an inequality. Now, pause for a moment. I want you to go right back to the beginning of the question, right? Now, what are we trying to do? We're trying to find at what point in the repayments, at what point do I hit a threshold and it's like, cool, I passed the halfway mark. Okay? I passed the halfway mark. If I have to pass a halfway mark and then anywhere after that, like the number's only going to get smaller, right? Is n going to be greater than this number or less than this number? Uh, I don't know. Greater Think than about greater. it. I want to know all of the number of months such that the yeah. amount that's repayable is smaller and smaller and smaller. Clearly, I want to go into the future, don't I? Right? If n were, like, say the number was. 150, which it's not. That's the halfway point, which some people guess. Believe it or not, some people just write down 150 and then they go home for the table. Anyway, <laughs> suppose it was 150, right? In that case, 151 would be okay, wouldn't it? 152 would also be okay. All of the subsequent months, the number should be getting smaller, right? So that's the first way you can say, look, clearly, just by logic of the question, clearly it has to be greater, right? That's the first way you can go about it. Here's another way. Come back to this again. Look at this line, right? 1.005 to the n. We have spent some amount of time looking at the graphs of exponential curves. What does that exponential look like? What do all exponentials look like, right? It looks like this, right? And you want a point, you want a point where this thing is greater than a certain value, right? So like, I have no idea where that number is. 2839, somewhere, somewhere like here, right? 1039. So I want all the parts of this curve that are above, like that. So which way does the inequality face? Answer, since it's up, what corresponds to that is n is greater than whatever that number is. Okay? n has to be greater than. It absolutely must be a positive. Okay? What am I going to do to evaluate this in my calculator? Change of base. Yeah, change of base law. So I'm going to go n is greater than, and you choose whatever base you like. I'm just going to write ln because I'm lazy. It is the least number of letters I can use to indicate a log, right? You can do that, and you'll get a number out, okay? Now, just before we get that number out, I want to show you, because that's not the only way you can go about this, sorting out this direction of the inequality, okay? Let me show you what I mean. There's one other way you could do this. <coughs> Come back to this line here. Okay? What I can do is, right, if you've got some number and it's bigger than some other number, right, clearly the log of this number is bigger than the log of that number as well, right? Does that make sense? Like it's how long it takes to grow there, right? So the time must be longer. So if this number is bigger than this, then log of that number must also be bigger than log of that number. <coughs> do you agree with that statement, right? If you have some number like 10, it's Sorry, a number like 100, which is greater than 10, log 100 is bigger than log 10. Do you agree with that? But look, just by saying that, I've avoided this whole problem of working out which way does my inequality 
go. Because look at this. I use my log laws to bring that N out the front. You see that? It's just gone out the front. And then over here, I just need to isolate that N. So I divide through by log of 1.005. Now, what's log of 1.00? Is it, is it negative? Is it positive? It has to be positive. It's got to be positive, because look, it's getting bigger, right? So therefore, when I divide through by that number, uh, that, then the sign doesn't change, right? And wait a second, that looks familiar, doesn't it, right? So if you prefer not to weed yourself out with like, wait, which way does it face and all that kind of thing, right? If that just makes your head hurt, then just take logs of both sides. This is not the normal way, the normal path that most people take. Most people take this path, but as a result get confused. I think it's worth knowing how to do it this way and to think about it, but if in a pinch, you can use that. Okay, wait, so, what is the same with the graph? okay so I was thinking about this graph here. Oh, I have my Right? And I know every exponential more or less looks the same. They all look like this. Okay? So I want this graph to be above a certain value. Uh, like here's a value and I want to be above it. Right? The n values, here's the n axis, that correspond to that are to the right. You see that? These values to the right correspond to these values up because they're this part of the graph. Okay? And right on. Okay, so you just need to pay attention to what this number is. Now think about it for instance, if, um, if I had something, we'll look at these later on, if I had something that was shrinking instead of growing, right, then this number here might be something like, oh, I don't know, log of 1, I'm oh, sorry, 0 0.9 to the end. Now, here's the thing, when I, when I bring that n out the front, like this, <coughs> and then when I divide through by log of 0 0.9, you pop log of 0 0.9 in your calculator. I don't know what it is, but it's negative, right? Because log of 1, log of 1 is 0. That's the switchover point, right? That's why this is just positive, okay? So that's why, in some ways, you've got to watch out for the sign regardless. But like for these financial questions, you're pretty much always looking at interest rates that grow because that's what interest rates do. They make things bigger. But in Japan, they've got negative interest rates. Yes, yeah, okay. in Japan though. <laughs> okay, now, oh, I'm not quite there yet. I haven't said the number. What is the number? Um, Give me a decimal. 201.54. Okay, good. What was so, the question? So the original question was, what month is it that I tick past and get less than $180,000 owing? And that month is 202. 202. You've got to get past that one. Even if this was 201.1, I need to get past that. I need to get past the threshold. Now, by the way, how many months were there in total again? 300. 300? So you've got to get two thirds the way through the life of the loan before you pay off half of the loan. That's because at the beginning, you've got all of this huge amount earning interest. So even though you're putting all of these repayments in, they're not making much of a dent. The interest is almost as big as this. Okay? So that's the way money and interest works. That's the percentages of growth.